Hey, what's up, everybody? Uh, so I'm over here, and I am on uh, Retro Pie, and uh, I I just wanted to put out a, a series of videos um, on. I know there's a lot of content you can get out there on Wikipedia, YouTube, um, you know, the the forum itself. Uh, there's a lot of stuff going on for this, and um, it's very helpful. And in fact, that I basically just put in a lot of time into learning it. And um, I've actually set this up, <coughs> excuse me, for uh, quite a few people. And uh, I, I just wanted to make something more or less like Retro Pie for Dummies or something like that, you know. Not that I think you're dummies much. Um, but um, I really just wanted to go over like a few, uh, like a mini series on quick how to's and stuff like that. Because when you're getting something out of the box that's pre prepared, there's a lot of it that you miss out on and um i just wanted to go over and cover some of those basic things for people just to, to help them understand how to use the system and and things like that so i i don't want to take long i'll try to keep this under 10 minutes um I, that's sort of what i want to do with them all uh, but i just wanted to give a quick introduction so i'm gonna get out of this game as i'm getting my butt kicked um but uh when you, when you boot up your system um especially if it's one that i gave to you you're really going to come to a screen looks something like this the, the images might be different but um you're gonna have this white bar in the middle that shows all of your different game consoles um and uh you're gonna scroll left and right to go through them um so if you notice a uh, quick little tip here if you ever carry so many games if you just sit still for a second it'll tell you how many games are on each system it'll pop up under a nintendo on this particular one i just i have 218 games on here, Neo Geo, 11, and so on. Um, pretty straightforward. Um, for every, uh, every whatever controller you're using, whether it's it's a keyboard or an actual game controller, there's going to be an A button and a B button. Your A button is going to go into, it's going to be your enter function, select, so to speak. Um, so it's going to go into whatever system you're on or whatever you're highlighting, and B is going to go back. Uh, pretty simple stuff um, and, and then right now I just drilled down onto Nintendo I don't have any images on here for the games uh, pictures of the box art and whatnot a, a lot of folks that I, I help out with this I uh, I include that I put that on for them this is just a, for demonstration purposes but it's still the same thing so um, uh, quick thing I want to show on here uh, like I mentioned there's over 200 games on here so if you want to play something towards like the end of the alphabet it might be Kind of annoying to scroll all the way down one by one. A couple things you could do. Um, if you're using a miniature keyboard, um, like the one I have right here, um, you could press page up and page down on the keyboard, and it'll do just that. It'll go up and down by page as opposed to one at a time. Um, if you have a, a controller with shoulder buttons, uh, you know, like left trigger, right trigger, but the ones in front of that, um, you can press those and those will do the same thing, page up and page down. So easier to get around. Alternatively, um, you could press the select button and it'll bring up jump to letter. You could sort by different things if you want, um, you, whatever floats your boat. But if you want to play something with a T, uh, I could just jump right to that. Um, and it's, it makes it a lot easier. So. Um, pretty simple, straightforward stuff. You could also hit left and right, and this will jump to other game systems as well without going back out to the main menu. Um, so pretty cool there. Uh, I'm just going to hop into a game, um, which just so happens to be one of my all-time favorites. Um, so just to show a couple things that are going on with this. Uh, so when you jump into a game, there's a system that runs in a background called RetroArch, which um, in a nutshell, it's going to take your configured controller and it's going to map it to that game system's inputs. So in this case, I'm playing with a controller that has like eight to 10 buttons or something like that. It's more of a modern day controller, like an Xbox One style controller or something like that. So keep in mind, Nintendo only had a directional pad, start, select, and A and B. So there's way more buttons in my hand than we're in a game system. So, so this program is going to map the buttons correspondingly. Um, so that system is called RetroArch. And the reason I'm bringing that up is because one of the main questions I get is, um, when I play an old game, I can only use a directional pad. I can't use my left analog stick. By default, yeah, but we could change that. And it's, uh, it's pretty easy, actually. So 
what you're going to want to do, um, there's actually a few of these in-game tips, and they all involve the select button. So if you hold down so the select button and you press X, or whatever you have assigned to your X button, um, you bring up the RetroArch menu. Um, so from there, to get your left analog stick going, just select the first option, Quick Menu. Right, and then you're going to go down to where it says controls. So here we have user one, user two, three, four, five. Um, so if you have multiple people playing, you can do this for each person. So if you have two controllers, user one and two, simple. Um, so it says user one, second option from the top, analog to digital type. And on the right side, it says none. All you got to do is hit the right directional button, and it says left analog. And all of a sudden, you can use your left analog stick. So then you just hit the B button to go back. And go back up to the top where it says resume. And you're back in the game. You can use the left analog stick or your D-pad, whatever floats your boat. It's right there. So it's a, it's a quick two-second fix. Um, and again, that's just the system saying Nintendo didn't have a left analog stick, but it had a directional pad. So we mapped the controls to the directional pad. That's, that's really what that is. And it's going to happen. This is a retro gaming system, so... Anything that didn't support an analog stick is really going to do that. And you could just tweak that setting when you jump into the game if, if you want to use the stick. So no big deal. Um, so another uh, special function you can get over here. Uh, yes, I just caused that fumble. I just wanted to say. So another function you could do is um, I don't want to jump out of the game, but I, you know, in this case I'm playing Tech Mobile. I, I picked the wrong team. I, I just want to reset it. Not a problem. Hold down select and press your B button. And on the bottom left, it says in yellow, reset. Um, and we're right back to the title screen, relaunching the game. Uh, pretty straightforward stuff there. Um, now I just want to jump into another quick game. I'll just pick random teams here. Um, just to show you, because the other common question I get is how do I save my game? Um, because let's face it, we don't have like three hours like when we were kids to sit there and play a game. Um, and if you do, I'm pretty jealous. But uh, so it's pretty simple as well. So again, it's going to revolve around holding down the select button. So if you hold select and you press the directional pad, left or right, press it left, it'll say state slot zero. Press it right, state slot one, two, three, because I'm continuing to press right while holding select. So they, I don't know. I don't think they even cap how many different save states there are, but you can pick whatever one you want. Um, maybe you save it multiple times in one game. I, I don't know. It's up to you. Um, but we'll just use zero for now. Um, so that's the one I, I picked out to save into. So I'm going to do this in the middle of a play to make it more uh, obvious what we're doing here. So I'm on, I'm on slot zero, and I'm going to hold select and press the right shoulder button. And on the left, it says, save the slot to zero. Um, so, boom, game saved. Now, how do we pull that back up? I'm just going to do the same thing. I want to press select because I'm, I'm already uh, I've already, I'm on the, the zero right there. So, and then to load it up, you just press select and the left shoulder button to load. And you see the game just went right back to the spot I was in before. Um, and I'll do it again. I'll load it back up. Game's right back there, which I just realized how much you could cheat in a game like this by doing that too. But um, it, it's pretty straightforward. So select and left or right to pick the save slot, and select and right shoulder button to save to that save slot, and select and left shoulder button to load that save slot. So make all your slot jokes now. I'm done with that. Pretty easy. So the last thing is pretty simple in terms of this stuff is how do I hop out of a game? Just press start and select. Um, it's going to take you back out to the previous menu. I, in this case, I was Nintendo and I was highlighting Tech Mobile. And there you go. It's right there. Um, so pretty straightforward. Um, uh, I, again, this is just wanted to, to get you started on some basic things. So the last thing I want to cover is uh, proper shutdown. And there's a few things to that. I mean, it's, it's really simple. Um, but... The, the memory in this system runs off of an SD card. And just like when you plug in an SD card or a flash drive to your computer, if you continuously just rip it out without properly ejecting it or preparing the system to release it so it stops reading from it, eventually it's going to corrupt. If you do it 
here and there, you know, it's it, it's a numbers game. The you know the more you drive, the more likely you are to be in a car accident. So the more you yank it out of there, um, the more likely it is to corrupt eventually. So it's it's not it's not like so frail. If you do it here and there, it's going to kill you. But um, you know you just want to avoid it if you can. So to do it correctly, uh, you can press the start button here, and it's going to bring up this main menu. Um, and you, you could be inside of the system and do this too. It doesn't matter. It just can't be in the middle of the game. Um, so you go down to quit. When you go to quit, um, you can restart emulation station. It's not going to shut anything off. It's just going to reboot the, the front end system. Um, and you can restart the system. Don't need to do that. We could shut down the system. We want to do that. Um, and we're going to do that. But some people have told me they accidentally click this, which is quit emulation station. So emulation station is the front end of, of the operating system. So I'm going to quit. And we all worked in places where there's like the easy to use system we have, or maybe not so easy depending, but there's a system that everyone's afraid of where it's like a DOS program, kind of like this. It's a black screen with like white or green writing or something. And you have to type commands to the computer and that's annoying. Um, all good. This is actually kind of a cool screen here. It'll give you some uh, information about your system, how much memory you have left on your SD, um, what your computer's, uh, what the core temperature is running at. So uh, the ones that I, I give to people typically have cooling fans because we don't want it to get up like in the 140, 140 or so Fahrenheit range. Uh, that could be dangerous and could overheat it. Um, this one's running at a cool 96. But anyway, if you ever accidentally get to this screen, it's a pretty simple fix. Just type the word exit, and it's going to take you right back. You could also type emulation station if you feel like being fancy, but it's pretty straightforward. You can see I just, I just hit exit and hit enter, and then it brought me right back. So don't freak out if you get there. It also will jump right there if you press the F4 key on the keyboard. So just in case you accidentally bump it, I just want you to know how easy it is to get back, and you don't have to do a hard turn off. So to properly shut it down, just go to quit. Shut down system, and yes. And after you do that, there's a power switch located on the power supply wire. You just click that switch, and you'll see the red light inside of the uh, the motherboard will turn off, and, and you're good. Next time you're ready to play, you hit the switch. It'll boot right back up and, and into emulation station. So there you have it. Pretty straightforward. I um, wanted to keep this at 10 minutes. Looks like I'm running just over, but um, I had to give a quick intro. So, um... Uh, any questions or comments, you know, please leave them below. And um, if there's any videos you want to see me do, just let me know, and I'll do my best to cover that as well. There's going to be more coming. So I uh, appreciate it if you would like and subscribe to the channel uh, just so I can uh, help keep you guys informed. All right. Thanks, guys.